you guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and in today's episode, I want to talk about the plastifying of Forge World. With my belief that Forge World is going to get rolled into Games Workshop in the next year or so, and looking at the kits that have already made it into plastic, I want to go through today and just quickly analyse what I think will and won't uh, get transitioned into plastic and what will end up going last chance to buy. Now, this all comes down to my personal opinion. Uh, again, there is no like leaks or anything like that coming to me. Just an educated guess based on what I think makes the most logical sense. So we're not going to look at infantry characters and such because I'm very certain characters are going to stay in resin because that's the sort of thing you do in resin. Finely detailed, low production quantities, not worth uh, making a die for because you're not going to sell enough of them. Versus something like assault marines, for example. Yeah, I see assault marines going plastic within the next year. So the first thing we're going to cover is vehicles. And when it comes to vehicles, it's all about the hull. So Aquators, I can see them going to plastic. I think they'll be one of the last tanks to go into plastic for the Marines. Sheerly because of the fact they're a relatively new sculpt. Same as the uh, Sabre tank, which will be down here somewhere. Down the very bottom. I can see this also transitioning into plastic, but again, later on down the line. And that's sheerly down to the fact that they're new vehicles. I think the Vindicator, both the regular and the Laser Destroyer, it will happen sooner rather than later. Uh, the Damocles, I can see the Damocles and the Sikram Battle Tank. So I should talk about both. I can see them not making a kit for those. Because I think with the Plastic Sikram already existing, they're more likely or not to change the turret design slightly and... Sell you a resin turret to upgrade your plastic tank with. That's what I think they would do. Uh, I think they'll do that with the Damocles Command Rhino. So you buy a plastic Rhino kit, you buy a Damocles upgrade, and it just gives you the satellite dish on the back and um, a little uh, roof pod plate, whatever, to mount it to. I think the same thing with the Sikarins here. They will modify the underside of the turret so they fit the new plastic Sikarin hull. On that note, with the release of the Whirlwind Scorpius in plastic, I think people who are savvy converters, uh, you should be able to utilize the Scorpius turret with a little bit of soft conversion maybe to it on the Sikarin Battle Tank kit in order to make a Sikarin Arcus. That way you have a plastic Arcus and it's only going to, I mean, if you bought a Whirlwind Scorpius anyway, it's just an easy turret swap for you. Uh, yes, the turrets are different between a Scorpius and an Arcus, but the Sikarin Arcus it's a slightly bigger turret, the missiles are different on it, but looks for looks, it's close enough at a distance. No one's going to tell you off and go, oh, that's a Scorpius turret, clearly. You can't put that in a cigarette and call it an Arcus. No, it's very clear what it is. So if you want to save a few dollars and you happen to have both those tanks already and you want to, you know, try the Arcus, that's a free suggestion for you. Mark 2B Land Raider, I don't see going to plastic. I see that one going last chance to buy. The Krios, I can see both variants coming in a single box set uh, later on down the line. I imagine that the tracks will get sold as a separate, oh, sorry, the tracks on it will be a separate part on the sprue, and that the sides of it will be plastic, uh, and rather than being cast as like a single piece of plastic, it'll be just the frame will be one sprue, and then what's underneath the frame, all the mechanical working parts, will be another sprue and one glues over the top of the other to uh, form that whole shape. I think that's how they would do it. That's how I would do it anyway. So I can see that kit definitely making it to plastic as a dual kit that can do both. Same up here with the Karaknos and the Triaros. I can definitely see that going into plastic as well. Uh, quite an easy hull shape to turn into plastic, I think. Uh, I think they could do it as a single kit available to do both. But I would lean more towards them making the Triaros itself and leaving the Karaknos as some form of upgrade kit. I just... I don't know, with what they did with the Sikarin, for example, they didn't put any of the other main turret options in there. So I can see them, you know, basically making the Karaknos more redundant because of that. Uh, again, I'm working off the theory that they're going to downsize this line. Now, the Dracosan... And, well, we have the fact that Solar Auxilia have come back into the web store, at least some of their stuff, in the form of Rapiers uh, and Surgeon Primus Joven. 
These have come back into the web store, they're still resin, they're the same old sculpts, they've just returned from last chance to buy. It may be forever, it may be for a very limited period, but they decided not to put them into plastic. They've also decided uh, not to put other things into plastic. Therefore, I'm going to reason that the Dracosan is going to stay in resin for a while yet. I really think that it's it's really going to be the uh, the stuff that is made uh, over at the marine level that's going to get transitioned first. Uh, I don't see the Red October there, the Sisters of Silence, Caron Patton Acquisitor. I don't see that becoming a plastic kit anytime soon. But the Termite could. Uh, it's a relatively recent model, only a few years old, so that could definitely make it into plastic. But again, I don't think there'll be a rush on that. I think the big rush is going to be to get maybe Krios, Triaros, and maybe maybe something like the Aurochs or Carnadon could go into plastic, but I'm not seeing it. I'm just not. I think the Solar Auxilia range is going to stay resin for a while yet. Uh, now, as for the Medusa and the Basilisk, I do not see them going over to plastic kits. The kit is similar to the Chimera kit, which is starting to really show its age because it's quite an old kit, uh, and it's upgraded with these resin components. So, also including the fact they weren't included in the main rulebook, I would lean towards them getting phased out over time. Uh, because they really don't like artillery in this edition of the Horus Heresy. They've nerfed it well beyond what needed to be nerfed to because, I don't know, people couldn't walk Terminators or Marines across an open table without getting killed by artillery because apparently the artillery players should suffer for that. I don't know. But yeah, I definitely see those vehicles just going the way of the Dodo eventually. So that's on tanks. Now Super Heavies. Melkador's and all their variants, I think, speaks for themselves. They will not transition over to plastic. But the Fellblade, Fellglaive, I can see that transitioning over to plastic as a twin tank kit. The one I would question is whether the Felshion does, because you share a turret, slightly modified, between the Glaive and the Fellblade. But the Felshion is a built-up solid superstructure, and we know from the Baneblade kit that they will do the uh, they will do the Shadow Sword as one kit and the Baneblade as another, and you get the different variants of both those tanks in their respective kits in the past. Now that's in the past. Things are a little bit different these days, and some things are being rolled together. And I think the Baneblade and the Shadow Sword now are in the same box, but they never used to be. So the question is, would they put them all together? Well, the tank utilizes a heap of parts of the Baneblade's hull. So would they run the Baneblade mold in Nottingham in one of their machines just to reduce the lower half of hulls and uh, the wheels to suit fell blades? Or would they, and, and then make another mold just to do the top half? Or would they start the whole thing from scratch? I think they would start the whole thing from scratch. And I think that they would sell enough of the kit to justify the expense of doing so based on the hype and the hyperbole. Every marine player in 40k is going to want an awesome super heavy if they give it good enough rules and they make it in plastic. Because remember, Forge World terrifies a lot of people who only know plastics. So that there would be a guess. I think is like a big release would be the Felshin, Felblade, Felglaive, maybe another gun variant in there. Um, that's a modification of them, maybe like a fell blade with short barrels or something. Uh, maybe a plasma blast gun version of the glaive turret. Not sure, but I could definitely see them doing something different with it. Uh, the Typhon and the Cerberus, obviously the Spartan is now a plastic kit. This one uses the old and really bad, because uh, the plastic uh, or the resin shrinkage, uh, Spartan chassis. So I think they will basically modify this so that you can put the... Uh, existing Typhon uh, gun and the Cerberus's gun onto the plastic hull. I think we'll just see a modification there of those two kits. Stormhammer, I definitely see that staying resin as it's simply an upgrade kit to pretty much a full Bane Blade Shadow Sword kit. Mastodon, staying resin. Uh, that's well and truly in the size, so is the Gorgon tank of ultra massive super heavies like titans uh, and once they get up into that sort of size they become such a bespoke boutique model that they're selling it on that appeal 
So I think they'll stay in resin. Going across to flyers now. So Custodes vehicles will both stay Forge World. But Storm Eagle and Fire Raptor, I could definitely see them doing something with those to turn them into full plastic kits. Now obviously the Storm Raven exists already and well the both the kits utilize quite a few of the Storm Raven's parts. Basically the wings, uh, large segments of the upper hull on the uh, Storm Eagle, it's quite a lot of uh, like doors and things like that uh, on there as well, winglets. But there is also a lot of resin components to it because it has completely different sides on the hull and different base plate to the hull. So it would need an entirely new kit, but I could see them doing it. As for the Thunderhawk and Stormbird, no, they're staying resin. Uh, Xiphon may make it into plastic. I say may, there's a lot of marine flyers already in 40k. Will they want to bring a 30k one over? I'm 50-50 on that, um, but I do think the... Lightning and the Thunderbolt will stay Forge World, and I think the Thunderbolt especially will get phased out as a last chance to buy, because these are much, much older kit. Uh, this particular variant of the Lightning is only uh, less than a decade old, whereas that Thunderbolt, that Thunderbolt has got to be 12 going 15 years old, I reckon. Anvilus Drop Pod, that'll go to plastic, at a guess, uh, and I think the Charybdis may just stay in resin because it is very big it's about the size of a basketball and that's what i think they'll do with flyers so to polish off this episode dreadnoughts i can see the derrideo going to plastic but down the line when it comes to jet bikes i see i don't think the outrider bikes will make it into plastic or at least anytime soon the scimitars, though, I think have a good chance of going into plastic. However, bikes in general are in a terrible place in the Horus Heresy right now. So I don't have a lot of faith there. And when it comes to infantry, I think breaches is a very easy one because it's just an upgrade, basically, to the Mark III breaches, which are already plastic kits in production. And I think the assault marines will also come across very quickly as well. Uh, probably an old uh, despoiler slash assault marine kit, maybe made as both. They may do it, they may not. It's hard to tell at this stage, but that's my guesses. I think who's really going to lose out here is the Solar Auxilia. They're not on the chopping block, but they are like the death core of Krieg. You get a few little hints that you might get something in plastic from Games Workshop, but really it is so much effort to put that army into plastic at a time when there's no niche for them to fulfill in the game. Is that worth it to the company? And thinking cynically, I would say no. So to recap, I think, yeah, quite a lot of vehicles will retain parts in resin, but use plastic hulls. I also think that some, like the Criaros, or the Krios, sorry, uh, and the Triaros, I combine that together like a, a, I don't know, a Ben and Jennifer, a Benifer, uh, the Criaros uh, combination will both go to plastic. And I think that when it comes to things like the Basilisk and Medusa, they will go last chance to buy. I think Vindicator and Laser Destroyer, two-part, two-build kit, easily turned into uh, plastic. And I think that the Sabre and the uh, Aquators especially will follow much later down the line. Because again, relatively new kits, they've probably got good stock levels of them and they need to burn through all of that first. More bespoke choices like Solar Auxilia, um... The uh, Custode, Sisters of Silence, that kind of thing. No, they will stay resin for a much longer period of time. And they'll just be available in some tab on the Forge World slash Games Workshop website because I honestly think Forge World is just going to become another tab on the Games Workshop website. But let me know what you think in the comments below the video. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching this episode and I will see you all in the next one.